King Pharaoh, God's people told enslaved in bondage to that wicked king to lay down in the grave. They cried to God in heaven, our load is hard to bear. Let them go, the saith the Lord, and the world sows mighty power. Pray on, a little longer children, work on, it won't be long, there's one more exodus coming, God's gonna lift your heavy load, God turned the water into blood, darkness clothed the land, and all the wicked felt the touch of the Lord's almighty hand. All Egypt lost their firstborn, death claimed King Pharaoh's son. Then he let God's people go, that was Exodus number one. Work on, there's a crown of Hello, this is PG, Patriot Gallery, Leah Michelle Fong. Today's date is October 24, 2021. If you'd like to follow along, you can go to resistancechicks.blogspot.com. And the title is Speak with God's Authority, Key to Surpass Tyranny. The glory of God. I was just listening to Bo Pony, and he's always saying, "For the glory of God, for the glory of God." The Red Sea is going to part, and it's all for the glory of God. And so I thought, well, I'm going to title this "The Glory of God." And there's like three vlogs I'll be doing. Let's see, where's the other one? And the very last one I'm writing right now, men built Satan's kingdom, the foundation of iron and clay, the glory of God. It's the series is the glory of God. So the different titles to um, different blogs I do. This one is going to be like two or three or four or five <laughs> different ones. And this is more like news. So we can end up with Satan being brought down with the glory of God. The thumbnail here, this is my land. We're going to go into a prophecy that Amanda Grace gave saying next year you can claim the land. And I've said this several times, the last four or five years, this is my land. And when you speak, you're going to hopefully learn how to speak with God's authority. It has to be God's authority. And this, you saw this in the opening. Kind of brings the thumbnail to life. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah is a song. But in it, it says, He has sounded forth a trumpet that shall never sound retreat. And you understand that as we get into the blog. But this is a wonderful song. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. And again, Bo Pony says, we're in a time of vengeance. He has loosed the faithful lightning of his terrible swift swords. His truth is marching on. And I show the lightning kind of striking those clay feet in the thumbnail of the last blog. His truth is marching on. And what are we all doing? We're all seeking the truth. Every time God does a move, and this isn't the last time or the first time God has moved, in the Civil War, God did a movement in the Revolutionary War. God did a movement. Martin Luther King, not Martin Luther King, Martin Luther of the Reformation. There was a movement 
and it's always seeking the truth, which is in the Word of God. The Bible is the truth. And it really is, honestly. I'm not kidding you. You can get find all your truth and all the answers to all your questions. It's, it's like a big philosophy book, philosophy book, but it also teaches what, what bad is and what good is. It teaches you the little things and tricks that the devil does and the evil men do. And if we heeded the warnings in the Bible, we wouldn't be in the mess we're in today. But they made sure we got rid of the Bible by putting it down and demeaning it and belittling it and saying it's old fashioned and things. It's quite relevant whether it was a Constantine and he just had a bunch of letters and the Old Testament in the year three, 300, I think. I mean, it, it was 3 AD, but that meant three meant 300 years after Jesus had died. And so he made the Christianize the Roman Empire. So whatever it is, whenever God does a move, he's always going to do exactly the same. And so if we want to come, overcome tyranny, the key to surpassing the tyranny we have today is obedience to the word of God, knowing what it says, finding the uh, weapons in it, the tricks you could say, how to produce miracles, and find it in there. And obey God as you obey God these things these principles Christian principles and Christian ways do work he has sounded forth the trumpet that shall never call sound retreat he is sifting out the hearts of men before his judgment seat oh be swift my soul to answer him be jubilant my feet our God is marching on and the beauty of the lilies Christ was born across the sea with a glory in his bosom that transfigures you and me. That means when we put our faith in God, we are transfigured. We were, we were a sinner and then we are transformed into a saint. And there are miracles that happen in our mind. God brings truth and light, his spirit and power to our minds. He writes all his word on our hearts and on our souls. And with that spirit, we are led to the truth and then the truth sets us free. That's why it says the truth is marching on. And be swift, my soul, to answer him. Be jubilant, my feet. Our God is marching on. And he died to make men holy. That means if you have all this truth in you and you obey the Bible, you will become a holy person. Let us die to make men free. Using that holiness in God's ways to make men free. We say the founding fathers liberated people. In one of the Old Testament words, God says... I have called you to liberate men. Why aren't you doing that? Instead, you're enslaving men. That's what America started doing at the turn of the century. Instead of liberating men and setting men free to know God and know his love, they started using witchcraft. And then you control people's minds. You control what they think. You control what they say. That's witchcraft. Whereas God, a good Christian person, is going to share God and the Holy Spirit and liberate people. So from then on, they are led by the Holy Spirit of God that liberates and fills people's minds with truth while God is marching on. And that is the glory of God, getting in the hearts and minds of men and liberating men and setting them free and filling with the truth that comes from God. This is a PDF type that a man downloaded and he downloaded some government information. He basically crypto is the deep state DARPA. They manipulate all the values like of gold and silver and of the paper. It's not the US military under the Constitution. The Constitution, this is totally illegal. But this is the corporation. Of course, that is based on Jesus Christ's salvation from Satan and bondage of sin. That's freedom from witchcraft and mind control. But under the corporation, that's how they keep people slaves, by mind control and manipulation. This is a separated, separated corporation in slavery or bound to Satan by sin, protecting its survival against humans that threaten its very existence. So the corporation is the devil pretty much so 
and everybody that's in that system is self-preservation. They're controlled by Satan. They don't know they're controlled by Satan. The sin in them obsesses their soul and drives them. And they believe this is me. Well, it's the devil driving them. They've never known freedom through Jesus Christ. And so the system, see, Satan sees humans as a threat, especially Christians who set people free, a threat to its survival. It likes to control people. It likes using witchcraft. It likes using phony, phony money. And the people run it are slaves to sin. So it's actually sin driving this whole thing and slaves to Satan driving this whole thing. The one thing needle is a classified state of art weapon technology system within a U.S. Western systems. Yes, it is a, a weapons of blank destruction to protect the blank cryptological systems or AI or quantum systems, which are at the heart demonic satanic. A living or involved mechanical deity or entity they say or it says or whatever <laughs> says it's evolved from the human existence as physical living beings you cannot make this up revelations Jesus saw Satan fall like a star out of heaven that's see the kingdom of God was the end so if Satan fell then he no longer has leadership or rulership over our minds, our souls, our bodies. And so that's a threat because this whole system, satanic system, is about controlling people's minds and their emotions and what's going on. So this is a copy from, I gave the URL so you can look up yourself. But this is a copy from a government you know, military, government, classified document. It talks about the blank, blank, blank. And it talks about the spike protein and how, where it was isolated and who isolated it. So it's not on this specific document. I don't want to get into the document itself. But you can go you want. I saw the doc document itself. And it did say that it was a classified secret weapon of mass destruction. By the United States government military. And it, and the, this is where I got. I thought I pulled it up with it <clears throat> I made these notes earlier and I've had in another video they called it a cryptological system protect it's to protect the cryptological system well okay let's just go there and see there it is you're gonna have to read some of this yourself It's always been a weapon system. And then this person gives places where you can go to look at the United States code, what the 4B is, and what this is. Shows the manufacturing and the content that's in it. Oh, it says it's heavily redacted. Oh, there it is. But 3.3b4 revealed information that would impair the application of the state of art, state of the art technology within a U.S. Western, Western system. So, you know, the NIH is working together with the military. So this isn't just one um, part of the government. They're all working together and even, um, oh, you got more here, okay. So all you, the information you need is in here. 
Okay, I covered a lot of it that I didn't know I had covered. So the warp speed, the uh, getting the patent and getting it approved and getting it up and running is all a part of a government plan to protect its technology. Here is a 3.3b4 review on information that would impair the application of the state of art state of the art technology within the weapon system. Reveal formally named or numbered US military war plans that remain in effect. And its war is against the human race, actually. <laughs> because we are a threat to its control. Because as Christians, we get people set free and liberate minds. Whereas the whole, its existence, its existence is to control everything on the planet. But we have power and authority over it. That's why I said in my thumbnail, the secret is when you speak, to speak with God's power and his authority. Now you see that the weapon system is real. And it does really affect people. When you have the power of God, it is real. And it really does affect people. But you can feel it. A lot of times Christians think they just say it and just say it in the name of Jesus. And you have power. No, you should be able to feel the power. And know you have the power. It's not just say it and do it. Okay, what happens is they control our minds so much. We don't walk in the power that God has given us. But hopefully I'll be able to help you out of that. <laughs> Revelations 12, 7. You just have to know that the devil was defeated and he can't rule your mind. Which they do right now. They rule, rule your mind. And there was a battle in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his, angel, and his angels. But they prevailed not. The angels, the bad guys, did not prevail. Neither was there place found anymore in heaven and the great dragon that old serpent called the devil and satan was cast out which deceived the world he was even cast into the earth and his angels were cast out with him then i heard a loud voice in heaven saying now is salvation and strength and the kingdom of our god and the power of his christ for the accuser of our brethren is cast down which accused him before god day and night and Verse 11, but they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto at death. And then there's just many, um, there's the amplified and the classical, classical amplified, different versions of the Bible, the King James. I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. And what that means, we're not told this, is that the kingdom of God was in you. It's your mind. It's your soul. And it's the power. So the power that it says in this verse here. They overcame with the blood of the lamb. And the word of their testimony. And loved not their lives to let death. Let me hear. Now is salvation and strength in the kingdom of God. And the power of his Christ. Jesus said wait in Jerusalem. You'll receive power. When we see the Holy Spirit. The power of his Christ. The power of God is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus died on the cross, paid the price for our sin, rose again, and now we're baptized in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And then we receive the power and gift of the Holy Spirit. And that's when God's kingdom comes within because those led by the Holy Spirit no longer sin because they're led by the Holy Spirit. And that's salvation from the devil and from these lies and manipulation. We just have to wait daily before God. The Bible says, wait on the Lord. He'll renew your strength. And that scripture says, God will give us strength. And he'll get the lies out and fill us with the truth. For unto us, oh, for a child will be born to us. A son will be given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders. So anybody who says Christianity and government don't, don't, do not mix, it says right here. Christians are supposed to be running the government because the government's on Christ's shoulders. And his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God. Well, we all kind of know by, you know. His name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. There will be no end to his 
increase of his government or of his peace on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and uphold it with justice and righteousness from then on and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will accomplish this. Who is this Jesus? We're going to find out. <laughs> they are left with cowards. Oh, after all this, after their weapons they're using against a lot of people voluntarily, they think they're going to be left with the people who survive are going to become super powerful, joined to a machine fast. You know, they're going to be uh, physically stronger. They're going to be mentally faster because they're connected to their computer. So the computer will give them super um, strength and super wisdom. See, we have that with God's spirit in us. And that's the right way to be reconciled back to the Garden of Eden where Adam fell. Well, God was with him and in him. So Adam was super, super intelligent and super, super strong. And with God in us, we'll have that again. This is man trying to be whole again or very powerful and very wise without God. But sin will control the machine and the man no matter what. And I'm sitting here saying they will be left with cowards after their forcefulness. Now the right side, I mean, they're right. <laughs> the righteous are full of those who are very courageous because it takes a lot of courage to lose your job, lose your house, lose your home and reject Submit unto God, resist the devil, and he will flee. And re to reject this pressure on people's minds. Gideon's army only had the courageous in it. Isaiah 9, 6. And the increase of his government, there will be no end. And Michelle says that it, God, more, what that means is there's more and more and more Christians. And more godly ways are happening in the world by more people. And these few become, with God in them, are an impenetrable force, unstoppable. Now, a lot of this will be news. That was, I consider news. And a lot of it will be teaching, but more news on this particular blog. What, what's most important to the individual and to the Christian is the condition of a soul. Jesus went to heaven. He sent us his Holy Spirit to give us supernatural power. With that, we are led by God's Spirit into the truth, and then the truth sets our mind free from lies that bind our souls, from demonic oppression. Everyone who believes something other than gold and silver coins in hand or real money, they are being held against their will by sin, demonic oppression. Sin controls and dominates their souls and minds and emotions. Most people are mentally stuck in eighth grade. Why women have weight problems uh, through puberty, girls tend to physically change, causing weight gain. And boys uh, have trouble not lusting after females or pornography because of puberty. Jesus said, unless you become like a child, two, three, four, five years old, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. You need that childlike faith or life, love, happiness. Small children are growing rapidly. And so you want to go back there and remember that um, because of the love and the life and the happiness. That's what was healing. That where your mind was at the time brought a lot of healing and, and brought a lot of life. And you just kept growing really fast. And so you go back there. You remember your childhood. You ask God to show you the truth so that might be healed and get your faith back. And you can start healing quickly. Now the crypto and the what's called is satanic worship that the military is doing. A child has right now in this article, a child has bronchitis and a sinus infection. They're like, their nose is stopped up, their ears are stopped up, their ears are hurting them. And then the hospital refuses to tend to the child. Um, the child isn't programmed by the sh roll up the sleeve. The hospitals are now only for half past humans who are 
not evolving and being joined to computer interfaces. A half-past human is a being that resembles a human in most respects, but who has powers and abilities beyond those of standard humans. These abilities might include improved intelligence, awareness, strength, and durability. A child in Indiana who has been diagnosed with an infection is refused treatment. And it's just really a sinus infection. All of us, every single one of us can fix that. Give them a couple of antibiotics. <laughs> And even now with the new ones, I don't want to say that medicine, we're all using this other medicine. It's really helping to clear out our lungs and clear out our throats and stuff. See if this is what we'll play here. No, you need to come talk to me. Mom. 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 Yeah, she just walked away from me. The doctor? Yeah. After they, yeah. No, after they just diagnosed my son with an infection, they're refusing to give him medication. Is she not a doctor? She's a nurse practitioner. You can leave now without your phone. Excuse me. That is part. I can confiscate it to a call 911. You don't need to grab my stuff. Can you please walk out? Kathy, can you please call security? So what you're telling me is my son has an infection. Can you please and you're, and and you're unwilling to treat him? Um, what we've asked for. And now she's um, videotaping everything and basically going to display under my name. Oh, I will. I will give this to whoever I need. So what it is, is with the, uh, it's going to be for superior people, I guess, you know, hospitals. <laughs> it's the Nazi idea that the weak and the infirmed, uh, the elderly, the disabled, they're not welcomed in society because they're beneath everybody else. And that's how these people are feeling and thinking. Like I said, with the Holy Spirit, with God, we become supernatural beings. But they think that being broken and their real mind and emotions and body are torn to pieces and turned into machines. I mean, if somebody has a a limb that's been lost and they have a um, prosthetic, I'm sorry, I'm not saying that right, limb. I mean, you're glad they have that. But I'm sure the person would rather have their leg back, you know. And... So most people, once this is gone, they'd rather have their real cells back and the whole being back because their mind and their body will always miss that they're not whole. And that's where uh, Cliff High gets his name, Half Past Human. Uh, now we need to remind them and the cowards who follow their lies and obey them with one voice. A few with God is an impenetrable force, unstoppable. The battle hymn of Republic sound, sounding out the trumpet that will never call retreat. His kingdom will always be advancing. Almighty God is our king. We only obey God, his spirit, and his word, the Bible. Respect your elders. In a minute here, I'll show you an 87-year-old woman, very articulate. Uh, we just interviewed, Leah Michelle just interviewed uh, G. Edward Griffith, very articulate. You can learn so much about from him. And the same with this uh, woman here. And she's very informative. Watching this will help your perspective, honestly. You'll see more. You'll see more truth. You'll, you, we've been brainwashed for over 100 years. So we need these um, older, elder people to highly respect them and honor them but they can open our eyes to truths that are in our minds but they remember more clearly because they lived it we've just been told about it and so it their words kick some of the darkness out of our soul and fill us with light so it, that's what helps our perspective you'll easily discern good guys from bad guys um 
she talks about the national ID card, and then you, when you come out of this, you go, no, I, no, 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 to the passport and to the national ID card, because this is how Hitler tracked everyone and sent the Gestapo against any dissenters, like one person she goes on to talk about. She just bought some sugar. Now, they were given coupons for everything they bought because there was food rationing. And she was supposed to turn in her sugar coupon. Instead, she went and bought something with a sugar, sugar coupon. Well, because of her national ID, they could trace her and find her. And she went to jail for buying sugar. The lady goes on to say Switzerland was the only nation that stayed free. They stayed free because they kept their guns. And even today in Switzerland, everybody must have a gun. And they had no national IDs. And this person is a um, survivor of the Nazis. She was there before and after they came. I'm just going to play a little part of it. I'm, I'm hoping that you'll go to resistancechicks.blogspot.com and look read these go get the links the links are all in the blog and watch these for yourself to you bring your national id card don't ever let that happen here very bad idea let's play it again that was grace of God. you could not board a bus you could not board a train without showing your national ID card. Don't ever let that happen here. Very bad idea. The next thing would happen, Hitler gave us free radios mm. so we could listen to him. He was a great orator. And then he nationalized the radio station. And we were warned if we would turn on a foreign radio station like British Broadcasting or Switzerland death penalty. Nobody turned on a foreign radio, radio station because you know what the what, what death, the death penalty meant. So the newspaper before it hit the street it was being censored by the government. So the only voice what we had was the government radio station and the government controlled newspaper. So a lot of new things happened very quick. Hitler gave us equal rights. Oh, that sounded so very good. Equal rights for everybody. Also, everybody was Get, was uh, getting a guaranteed income from the government. Mm. The Equal Rights, here we call it the Equal Rights Amendment, Equal Rights was designed in two components, equality, uh, economics, and social. Economics that was designed to equalize the country's wealth because everybody was entitled to a guaranteed equal income. In order to achieve that, they had to raise our taxes up to 70% to equalize the wealth, those who were on the lower income level to graduate them up there to an equal level. They got subsidized housing. They got um, food stamps. They got heating fuel. And they got a certain amount of payment from the government for each child. So they equalized the, the country's wealth by taxing us 70% to bring that label, the lower income level, into an equal level, and that is called socialism. Yes. On the social level, of course, on the socialism, everybody has to be in the workforce. And she goes on and on on that. It says, Nazi survivor tells how Hitler rose, 
who reminds her of Hitler, um, oh, who reminds her today of Hitler, not who you think. And she said uh, what happened was Hitler was doing, we, they heard rumors that Germany was doing great. They had all these manufacturing, well, they were manufacturing war materials, <laughs> guns and, and tr um, tanks and bombs and stuff. So the economy was doing great, but they were using fake phony money to do that. And Austria, where she was from, they had like 25% unemployment. They had no jobs. They were all going hungry. They did food rationing. All these terrible things were happening in Austria. And so they got together and they wondered and figured out a way to make Hitler their president because they wanted what Germany had. And he came in and she ends it with they were getting rid of the disabled and the weak and the infirmed and the elderly. And, and she learned about it. And when she learned about it, um, she, it was, the war was about over by then. So she grew up in this atmosphere of Hitler taking over. And at the beginning, they just loved him and thought he was great. And she talks about, now this is an older video, but it's very pertinent for today. And she's talking about Obama. Obama reminds her a lot of Hitler. And the reason I have these pictures of St. Augustine here is the song was in my head and I wanted to put it here that God is a mighty fortress. And it goes with my um, paragraph here where did I put it oh with God reason Jesus pa died passed away <laughs> rose again so they could give us the Holy Spirit and he's giving us a supernatural power and that makes us this, this fortress with the Holy Spirit in us and this is like the perfect fort, the uh, triangles, the angled walls, and then the these, they could not pull their ships up to it because the wall is angled. They couldn't easily just run aground and take the fort. And I just wanted to show you how huge it is. It doesn't look very big from the above photos. But it's very, very big. And these are the size of people. And that's how big the walls are. And the stone is almost impenetrable. They have little side, side, um, you know, they tell about it. And it talks about how impenetrable the walls are. You can hit it over and over with a cannonball. And you're not going to get through the walls in the front or because it's made of tiny little shells and a lot of the ocean and it just solidifies so hard it's almost impossible to break. Now there's just a couple things I want to show on Amanda Grace. Rectifying laws and history 16 for and says the spirit of the Lord this day a quill dipped in ink shall in the spirit and the natural begin to rectify okay so a quill dipped in ink shall in the spirit and in the natural begin to rectify history and write new law and this quill this feather Oh, this quill, this feather quill shall go across state borders, rewriting and rectifying laws or law as events in Texas and New York. You shall see an event in tandem as the sins are dealt with and what man has written and judged the blood of the innocent. I, the Lord, thy God shall judge and decree life and a rewriting of the law as I write on the hearts of listening men and women to act in their states as a victory cry begins to faintly be sung first and then shall become as loud as a war cry across your nation. 
says the Lord of hosts. And says the Spirit of the Lord this day, The Lord thy God is not fooled, for it is fools who rush in, and foolish men who desire to weave a corrupt symphony of words that lull man into following, as so the rats did the Pied Piper. Disciples question mark. Ha, says the Lord. The leadership of New York has attempted to double down and has attempted to turn and twist the word until it was so mangled in the midst of the people to push the second half of this wicked agenda filled with malice and oppression. However, says the Lord, I have driven a wedge in. That's all capitalized, by the way, the whole sentence. And says the spirit of the Lord this day. Bottom feeders shall rise to the surface, their concealers shall crack and fall off, and their true nature shall come forth, says the Lord of hosts. And says the Spirit of the Lord this day, the serpent and the scorpion shall attempt to constrict and to sting. However, going into your new year, you shall see both the serpent and the scorpion cut in two, and the content of what the serpent so feasted on revealed. And says the Spirit of the Lord this day, for the remainder of the year into next, you shall see this who has been hidden, concealed for a season, rise to the surface and come back out for air. Some I, the Lord, am bringing back to the forefront and others have pushed themselves back out into the forefront and have gotten out of my capital timing, says the Lord. And says the Spirit of the Lord this day, the word launch, capitalized, shall be heard and used in more than one way as you see people, missiles, missions, launch. And says the Spirit of the Lord this day, into next year there shall be a key capitalized archaeological discovery that matches a crucial area of the word, my word, that's capitalized. The word is living, capitalized, my children. Use it. Utilize it. Arm yourselves with it. Feed yourself it. For Satan has gone forth to attempt to disillusion the masses. For he has gotten a hold of the mouths of some. In an attempt to turn those away from me who are seeking me, says the Lord. And says the Spirit of the Lord this day. The chromosome script shall. I don't want to play all of it. So I got to watch what I'm playing here. I didn't read this first. I have the little quill here. Wondered what a quill was. Victory Kai, Pipe Pep, Piper. And she talks about the people who are trying to lead others astray right now. Fire for New York. Now, Timothy Dixon, I'm going to play a little later, and he explains um, a lot of this. Snake and scorpion cut in half, con content will be revealed. So, when the snake and a cor scorpion are cut in half, the content will be revealed again. Mere true nature, everyone will see themselves, so will everyone else. And that's again with Timothy Dixon. The um, he has a prophecy where people look in the sky and they see it a mirror. Well, you're going to see what you really are because that's what pressure and persecution does. And when bad things happen, when we're under attack like this, they say when you go into war, you find out what you're really made of. But the thing of it is everybody else is going to see what you're made of too. And she's pretty much explaining the same thing. They both have almost identical prophecies, but in different ways. They receive information from God in different ways. But it's the same thing. He archaeological discovery my word is living use it i have repeatedly said over and over and over the declaration of independence and the constitution are everything from the word of god it's a practically scripture and you and they are living and they're breathing and we need to learn to use them but you have to understand them first and as you understand them then you can use them and they're sharper than any two-edged sword and you can put the other guy down and that's our power and our authority that these men were very good men. I mean, hopefully you see all evil men right now, how evil they are. They are full of lies, um, laws and rules that are lies they've just made up. It's like a game or a board game that you just make up. And then they sell it on the market like a toy store would sell a, market, a, to, um, a new game. And that's what they do. They just make it all up. See, God's word is not made up. 
it's the real life and death laws and rules of science and what works and spiritual oh okay I, I now I remember the oven a fire for New, New York we, we, what we're going through is like an oven you're being tested there's a lot of pressure there's a lot of heat okay and that's what that's all about and some people are going to be in there and hear the pie pipers that give them peace in their soul and they don't want to face the fire they'd rather just go along with whatever gives them peace in their mind and just accept that because they can't face the fire or the stress and the pressure that can get the bad stuff out it's like the bible talks about how god will put us in a fire sometimes and we're going to be purer than gold and silver well gold and silver has to go through a lot of fire then all the dirt comes to the surface and it's wiped clean and so you might see yourself getting ugly and mean and nasty i mean some of these people we know right now are doing some really things he's like oh gosh they were so nice then all of a sudden they're not nice anymore and you realize they're in this pressure it's going to come to the surface but then god can clean it up and bo pony says it too he says god's coming for a church without spot or wrinkle well all this pressure is making this church stronger and stronger and stronger because as this comes to the surface and we see this about ourselves we can take it to god and have him remove by his power of his spirit maybe some badness or ugliness in us and what we've heard for years is this negative talk about christianity now the bad guys knew because my last vlog is going to be about attacking the foundation the bad guys knew if they could attack the foundation which is the bible which is christianity which is the decoration of independence and the constitution and attack the character of the founding fathers who did everything right according to the word of god you ruin the foundation then the uh, kingdom of god that was on the earth through the founding fathers falls and so we need to be as wise as serpents these bad guys and as harmless as doves we need to know what their foundation is that we might attack the foundation so that's what the last blog is and so that the um, iron and clay kingdom will fall use your authority the enemy causes hesitation through the negative talk about christianity founding fathers hot oven is for the wicked and again timothy dickens timothy dixon he makes this point also <laughs> stresses this point that's the word i was looking for that heat will also expose who the bad guys are and how really bad they are i am a god who despises wickedness be thou holy for i am holy says the lord you are more than conquerors through christ jesus if you would just believe my children and utilize the authority the enemy has so tried to make you hesitate in there shall be many twists and turns as the unexpected and unprecedented takes place as a rushing wind a rushing holy wind shall gust through the supreme court and washington dc and blow out that which has so desperately been turned over on the tables says the lord of hosts this day it is by my capital power and outstretched arm you shall be redeemed come on to me capitalize all who are heavy laden and i the lord shall give you rest however for the wicked it shall storm indeed the most unusual storms in various parts of the world to confirm what i the lord have spoken this day seismic activity seismic activity says the lord the warning before the plates okay so he's talking about earthquake seismic activity says the lord the warning before the plates move and the earthquakes there is much seismic activity in the spirit seismic activity that has not happened for some time as the precursor that the unusual is set to take place including unusual events in the heavenlies to confirm that your nation shall tip says the lord of hosts and says the spirit of the lord this day the church has been 
on a seesaw and no more shall they vacillate back and forth and go up and down on positions depending on what benefits them most to the congregation. For I, the Lord, am firmly planting those willing to take the tough stance, the difficult road, having done all to stand, as the seesaw shall break on many that have gone up and down one too many times, and the center has become brittle and compromised." I, the Lord, am calling my capital shepherds to stand and be shepherds and stand in the face of corruptness and stand when it's not the popular stance and stand th though the enemy, though their congregants be angry, to stand because I, the Lord, told you to stand and that my children should be a, gore, a steep dip, a steep dip to come, followed by an incredible rising and soaring like the eagle, says the Lord of hosts. You shall run and not be weary. You shall run the race. You shall press toward the mark. You shall plant the flag next year, says the Lord of hosts this day. You shall law, in parentheses, lay, claim for me, the Lord your God, to the areas which I have given you. Now that has to do with the last, well, I guess this one here. That's why it's very important. I want to replay this steep dip a steep dip to come followed by an incredible rising and soaring like the eagle says the lord of hosts you shall run and not be weary you shall run the race you shall press toward the mark you shall plant the flag next year says the lord of hosts this day you shall law in parentheses lay claim for me the lord your god to the areas which i have given you we're going to come back to that. We're not done to finish that, but I wanted to show the thumbnail on here. It's because she said that, that I came up with this thumbnail. That's what you do when you, you lay claim to something. You're going to speak out and we're going to have to do that with God's um, authority. And this is the key to, to surpass the tyranny. And it's the glory of God that we are supernatural human beings. And when we speak in his power and claim this is my land in his power and authority, spiritually things happen. And you'll see how powerful the voice of the courageous that did not give in to the pressure, did not give in to the forces and pressures. Use your authority. The enemy me causes hesitation I read that stand separation between this is my words the cowards who give in to the pressure and the courageous who refuse to give in to it you might I've lost my house I've lost my home I've lost so much many times because I trusted God I refuse to sin and if you refuse to sin and today you don't have a thing you don't own anything it's just the way it is and this is my words again. I, she said there'd be a, a deep dip. I'm just saying in this stock market crash. And then there'll be a huge rising for those who actually took the stand. I'm thinking like silver and gold will go up. And all people will claim this is my land. And when you plant the flag. You serve an awesome God. High and lifted up. The earth is my footstool, and I, the Lord, shall and will have my way on the earth, though wickedness attempt to advance. The word must go forth and accomplish what it is set out to do. Eric, says the Lord of hosts, believe in me, trust in me, and know I am God, that I am, all capitals. Thus saith the Lord of hosts in the name of Yeshua. Amen and amen. And that is... So that's where I got the thumbnail. Secondly, I've been encouraging Leah and Michelle to um, study the... The right, they're the ones that came up. I didn't. <laughs> they came up with the title Isaiah 58 Ministries because they were living this in 2008, um, 2010, well, actually 2003. <laughs> Is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen to loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke to set the oppressed free and break every yoke? Isaiah 58, 7, is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with is kind of faded there with shelter 
when you see the naked to clothe them and not to turn away from your own flesh not to turn away from your own flesh they came and helped their grandmother and uncle jack and not to turn away from your own flesh now god will be fixing all of it all the way back to the federal reserve if my people humble themselves isaiah 58 he will restore and rise up the foundation restore property lines etc it is all right there in the bible now i had already written this when she gave this um prophecy it was like oh wow i had already written this up i added this later her her prophecy later just to confirm that <clears throat> if it's god we're all gonna be saying the same thing no matter what and the, and what we say is gonna go along with what the bible says that's the move of god's holy spirit in us being focused on God and God centered, we get rid of the um, control the world has on us with their lies, and then the truth just pops to your mind. But then also the Holy Spirit. It's all right there in the Bible. Tell everyone you know to get into the, their own genealogy, find their great great granddaddy's land they inherited. The communists stole the F. FDR, the Marxists, the fascists, they stole the land, they stole our freedoms using counterfeited, fake, phony, funny, fiat money. You can only buy with gold and silver coins. It's just a principle of God. In their game they make up, in their uh, monopoly game, or they, they call it, let's say, the Federal Reserve Game Board, that they make up all these laws and then they sell to the public, you can use fake, phony money. In real life, before God, you can only buy and sell with gold and silver coins. That's just, that's God's law. It's the law of the universe. No one owns all the land. The government thinks it, uh, it does. And it's wrong to have more than your family needs. And like you got the railroads, you've got the uh, telegraph, and that's in the last blog too. Um nobody no company no corporation can have more than what their family needs i just was watching a show and this guy said listen when you buy this product you're supporting 17 christian godly families okay but you don't take more than you need that comes from john locke second treaties of government because god put each person on this planet and he allocated enough for us to multiply for another million years and you'll never overpopulate the earth you spread out as you grow as a family and your family spreads out you go out west or you go to less or there's always all these areas that you can spread out russia you spread out there i mean africa is a huge continent it's just people can't stick stuck in cities and that's when you have to have this need for and dependent on other people fight for you when you're out there on the farm you have to provide for yourself and you use what God is giving you there. But she just said that they'll be re rewriting history and rewriting laws spiritually. So spiritually, everything will be fixed that FDR did and Wilson did and all those progressive. It What happens, God forgives sin. And if he forgives it, then we make amends for it and we make up for it and he fixes it. Isaiah 58, cry aloud, do not hold back, lift up your voice like a trumpet, and declare to my people their transition, transgressions, and to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me day by day, and delight superficially to know my ways, as if they were in reality a nation that had done righteousness, and has not abandoned or turned away from the ordinances of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to in the nearness of God. Why have we fasted, they say, and you do not see it? Why have we humbled ourselves and you do not notice? Hear this, O Israel, on the day of your fast, when you should be grieving for your sins, you find something you desire to do, and you force your hired servants to work instead of stopping all work as the law teaches. And in that wicked people are judged now amanda grace confirms what timothy talks about in his um video i'll show some of his prophecy 
for others a furnace of troubled times. It is like the depression, causing great fear. They will submit to anything that promises relief from the fear. It doesn't matter if all rights are gone. Staying alive is all that matters. So he talks about troubled times. And what I'm saying is if you remember the depression, men would do anything to get rid of, for the promises of FDR of this new deal. The new deal is exactly like the Green Deal. Okay, it took away all our rights. And it took all the gold and silver away, so we had no money anymore. Because when you have money, then you have gold. Okay? They made it illegal, so it's just like the Nazis. There was no difference. Except we were told we were freer. <laughs> So we believe we were free. Well, they were told, Nazis were told they were freer too, and so the communists. You're freer now. Okay, but this is my words, that it's just like the um, Great Depression. People fall into fear. The whole idea of the globalists is to stop all the food coming in, stop all the money, stop, and then all these people are going to be dying all around us and getting sick all around us, and people are going to fall into this great fear. So they'll do anything just to stay alive and they'll give in to anything and they'll turn people in and they do these outrageous things that they normally wouldn't do. And that's the mirror. The mirror that will show who they really are. I said that to somebody um, in a chat somewhere. I don't know. I said, well, at least now we know who you are. I mean, they disagree with something or they turned on something and, and it's like, it doesn't bother me. You don't agree with me. I mean, that's okay. We can see who, which side you're on at least. You're not pretending anymore. But he goes into Malachi 4. Before, for behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven and all the proud, yea, and all that do wicked shall be stumble and the day that cometh shall burn them up saith the Lord of hosts and it shall leave them neither root nor branch I'm going to leave this up while I play his little prophecy here if I can oh, I keep talking about this is what I'm working on right now men built Satan's kingdom and the foundation of is, is iron and clay the glory of God so I have lightning falling because it's actually a stone that it, it hits the, hits the uh, giant, makes him go, and he falls forward. This is just a animation here. But it's gold and silver. <laughs> and it's going to bring it down because fiat built the satanic kingdom that we have all around us since 1900. Evil, sinful men built our country. You've seen the movie, The Men Who Built America. They're all evil, very evil. And this was their board game, and it's still their board game, so they play. you have to play according to their laws. And so we have to strike at their foundation, and then the righteous will power. And like she said, the righteous will rewrite all the laws, and will go and make things just and fair. That was an Amanda's prophecy. The depths of what you're speaking to us in this day in the name of Jesus we we thank you amen this is from Malachi the fourth chapter for behold the day cometh that shall burn as an oven and all the proud yea all and all that do wickedly shall be stubble and the day that cometh shall burn them up saith the Lord of hosts that it shall leave them neither root nor branch but unto you that fears my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings ye shall grow up and go forth and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall I saw in a dream that that the world the world their conscience in the world had had been seared to the point that most had become so so hard and so unsensitive it was like a darkness had took over to where no one could really see 
what used to be wrong, it wasn't wrong no more. And I had written in my blog, their conscience was seared, did not know right from wrong anymore. Darkness from things taught, especially in high school, because I'm working this through as I'm teaching these things. I'm working this through and getting rid of the darkness in my own mind because I'm in the fire just like everybody else. The pressure, I turn to God when things and there's pressure and forces so I can get healed. And that's what the pressure and force is for. And so it, the things you're taught in high school and in college and the laws they give you is and the laws we have even when i was in high school they're all corrupted and people are forced to face themselves it's like a huge mirror he'll talk about that in a minute he talks about reversing the reset a powerful move of god he talked about malachi 4 we just saw that fire or furnace of god trouble like the blank shots the lost jobs the lost rights the lost income the lost you might lose your home but god is going to restore you'll have more with god than you had with these evil people we're moving from a satanic kingdom into a godly kingdom so you got to lose everything that the satanic gave you that you might receive the things that god's kingdom is going to bring you and god will be strengthening the saints a burning or a purging like gold or silver in a fire bringing the dross to the surface and wiping it out and cleansing it I'm going to stop in between what his prophecy his dream is because I know if I played the whole thing it would take forever that our conscience had been seared and, and, uh, and we've we've went along and agreed with things that uh, used to we would not we would not agree with uh, but I saw it was like a darkness had took over no one could see I saw like a big mirror in the sky and like when you looked upwards towards the sky the whole sky was a big mirror everyone was able to see themselves out of the mirror and some was changing for the good changing their ways becoming more like Christians but some it's like they become petrified so hard that nothing could reach through to them they was turning into reprobates and when people begin to see it's like they went one way or the other as they begin to see their self in a mirror and it reminded me of the scripture where in the book of Joel I'd said that the seeds was rotted underneath the clods meaning the clods of ground had become so hard that the seeds that was planted could not even grow because you know the Bible speaks in one place for us to break up our fowler ground meaning you know you take I remember my grandma used to say uh, we have to go out there with a bottom plow she called it and, and turn that earth upside down to where the ground could could receive uh, could receive the good seed but if the, the ground was so hard it didn't do no good to plant the seed it wouldn't grow it wouldn't produce fruit so the way we accept you seeing yourself you know if the heart ever really sees yourself and sees how you are you're going to change if the vision is open but our vision becomes clouded and sometimes distorted and even blocked and we become blind by the different things and different sins or different uh, bondages inside our lives we can no longer see and that's where a lot of people had reached in in this country but the Spirit of God was being poured out on people all over the world their conscience was being quickened by God's Spirit evil was present in a great way but the Spirit of God was even stronger it was such a move of God taking place 
but many was being turned over because they had refused the Lord's counsel. Salvation was moving on the hearts. Repentance. There was such a change taking place in the spiritual realm until everything was transforming to good or bad. Something worldwide was taking place so powerful it was beyond anything you could imagine. There was such a presence of God until it was compelling many to repent. I had never seen or heard of such a magnitude of the display of power of God. I saw on a truck stop like the Loves truck stop and there was a news flash on the TV and it was showing different clips of, of great moves everywhere and the news was casting out they were saying this is a phenomenal never have we ever heard or seen such a presence of God the power of God was moving and healing seeking and speaking in unknown tongues in churches that normally they did not do such a thing I saw different laws was being reversed I then heard the voice of the Lord speak and say, Prepare yourselves. Speak to the nation and tell them that the day has come that my spirit is burning like an oven. That the ones that has rejected me, the fire of my spirit shall burn them up. I begin to see how... I'm going to play more of that in just a moment. This is more of Isaiah 58 Ministries. That's our title here of our blog is Isaiah 58 Ministries. That was here a long time before Resistance Chicks. The fact that you are, that you fast only for strife and brawling and to strike with the fist of wickedness. You do not fast as you, sh you do today to make your voice heard on high. Is a fast such as this what I have chosen, a day for a man to humble himself with sorrow in his soul? It is only to bow down his head like a reed, and to make sackcloth and ashes as a bed, pretending to have a repentant heart? Do you call this a fast and a day of pleasing to the Lord? Isaiah 58, 6. Rather, is this not the fast which I chose? To undo the bonds of wickedness, to tear to pieces the ropes of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and break apart every enslaving joke, yoke. Excuse me. <laughs> Is it not to divide your bread and with the hungry, and bring the homeless poor into the house, when you see the naked that you cover him, and not to hide yourself from the deeds of your own flesh and blood? And so that's what we have not done for a hundred years. We've been putting more and more and more yokes on people. Every new invention is a new yoke, whether it's a cell phone or whether it's television. Uh, you always have to have the newest and, and newest on the market computer or cell phone to stay in touch and stay up with things. They give you a new Windows 8, 9, 7, you know, 10, whatever. And, it's, and then you have to have the newest car. And these are yokes and bondages and more yokes and more bondages. And nobody ever has the time to and pursue happiness, enjoy their life and to love their spouse or love their children. If you're always stretching just to stay ahead or to stay afloat with the new inventions being made all the time. The scripture said that the day comes that it shall burn as an oven. But I began to see that this oven had two different plays that it could take place in. You know, the, the potter, it talks about a potter in the 18th chapter of the book of Jeremiah. And it speaks there how that the potter has power over the clay. And that oven, I begin to see in this, that the oven transformed a lot of uh, people into something great 
but that same oven that transformed the vessel to something great also was a great destruction to many. So I was seeing it take place to two different, to, to different sides, two different ways, two different measures, but it was much like the, the, the parable where Jesus said that it's going to rain on the just and it's going to rain on the unjust. You know, the, the rain's going to hit both. Meaning, uh, your justice is coming to you one way or the other. If you live right, you'll be judged graciously uh, by God's mercy. But if you don't, there's a belt coming to you and he's going to whoop that honey. Hallelujah. I like to put it like that anyway. Tell you how to, Mama used to say. And, um, uh, Mama got through, I didn't have much hide left. But uh, I began to see how that the power of God began to transform people. And this spirit of God was the Elijah type spirit of God that was hitting all over the world. It was hitting right now, right now at this hour, this very day that I'm speaking of right now. I've seen the Lord take the wealth of the wicked. And he give it to the people. He give it to God's people. I saw such a such a dramatic change that it was so unbelievable. You couldn't believe it. You couldn't believe it. We've had one system for so long that it's hard to believe. If anything, you talk about any kind of change, it it seems crazy because we've become asleep. Okay, I'm gonna stop there and do another part. This part one will probably have an ABC on it. It's pretty long, but I try and keep. I want to try and keep around an hour, and that was been an hour and twenty minutes. It is PG signing off. The Egyptian army followed to slay them that were free, but God took off their chariot wheels and bound them in the sea. Praise on, a little part of children walk on his face to see. There's one more Exodus coming.